And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remixed, The Lockup, episode six. Right on. One of these days, I'm going to get that sound effect in there because every time I'm like the lockup, I want to go. You know what I'm saying? I'm your host, Big <laughs> Brian Adams. Joining me as always, Junior Ruiz. And we're going to get right into it this week with uh, some GFW Global Force Wrestling talk. I'm going to leave this one off to you because all I know about this is it's Jeff Jarrett's new promotion. Yeah. So, um, there's a lot behind it. You know, he's starting a new promotion. Um, and right now, they're making waves because of every, you know, they're constantly uh, announcing new signees. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and run down the list of all the confirmed GFW roster names. Ready for this? I'm ready. Uh, obviously, Jeff Jarrett. Let's do this. Karen so Jarrett. Really? Yeah. Well, dude, it's his wife. Why? I mean, he? I get that it's his promotion, but isn't he kind of old to be wrestling still? Yeah. They just signed. So for uh, all you WWE hopefuls out there, they just signed Shelton Benjamin. So he's not coming back anytime soon. Really? Uh, the Young Bucks have signed. Don't know who they are. You don't know the Young Bucks tag no. team? No. Um, Shao Sanin. No. The UFC guy. No. Really? No. Wow. Continue on. I feel like I, I looked at this but list yesterday. But he's supposed to be on there, I believe, as a commentator. Okay. I looked at so. this list yesterday, and there was just like, um, okay. Scott Hall. Okay. Jim Cornette. Big Papa Dump. Pete. What? Jim Cornette, man. Oh, so you said Scott Hall. Scott Hall, man. The bad guy. Where's Ramon? Hey, I, really? Scott Hall? Yeah. What the hell is he going to do? I don't know. Just gimp out to the ring? I don't know, man. You said Scott Hall. I thought Scott Steiner. Steiner. No, Scott Hall. Okay. Uh, Jim Cornette, mm-hmm. PJ Black, as you, as you may remember him as uh, Dust, Justin Gabriel from WWE. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, Thea Trinidad, which the other day I posted, and you're like, who? Yeah, who? Oh, dude, she's like one of the, like, probably, you know what? I probably put her at the number one hottest diva in my eyes. Really? Yeah. Even, and then, even more higher than your English muffin? Yeah. Wow. English Muffin comes in at number two. Wow. I'm kind of astonished by that. Just you are, but you know what? Hey, I like my Latinas. There you go. You know? And then Velvet Sky. Okay. Anyways, continuing. Uh, so, Thea Trinidad, Carl Anderson, Doc Gallows, who you remember as, um, uh, he was Festus in WWE. You see him, he's part of the SES, Luke Gallows. Okay. You remember that? Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> Sanjay Dutt, you remember him from TNA? Yeah, I know. Lance Hoyt, yeah. uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. You yeah, remember him? I know who that DA is. Yeah. Smith, Moose, yeah. George T. Murdoch, formerly known as Brodus Clay. Wow, really? They got Brodus Clizzle. Luke Hawks, Andrew Everett, Ta- um, Takaki, Wantanabe. Bukaki. <laughs> I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. It's T A K A A K I, is the first name. Uh, Trent Beretta. He was briefly in WWE. Okay. Uh, Seiya Sanada. Okay. The New Heavenly Bodies. Okay. Jimmy Rave, Jigsaw, Jasmine, uh, Olivin. Uh, I, I, I suck with pronouncing Like in a bunch of other people we've never heard of? Jasmine Alavincia. I have never heard of any of these people. Alavincia. Um, the Hot Shots, Cliff Compton, Chuck Taylor. That's a copyright right there. Right. And Laid Tapa. She's from uh, TNA. Laid, okay. I'm, sure I'm, probably, I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering so, most of these names. So a bunch of old dudes that have no business being in the ring and a bunch of people we've never heard of. But here's the thing. And Justin Gabriel. I like, dude, and Scott Hall and Jim Cornette and yes. Justin Scott Gabriel. Hall's one of those old guys that has no business being in the ring. I can't believe you don't know who Shale Son- Son- no, is. No, not a clue. Not a friggin' clue. Um, but you know what? I'm okay with this lineup because it's a fresh lineup uh-huh. for the most part and it's a fresh company. Okay. You know, and Jeff Jarrett knows what he's doing. He comes from a wrestling promotion. Didn't Jeff Jarrett start TNA or yeah. own TNA at one yeah, time? Yeah, he started it. Okay. You know? All right. I feel that, you know, TNA could have been so much more had he had the financial backing not to need Panda Energy and Dixie Carter. Right, right. Then, you know, TNA could have honestly nice, been a totally. contender. I like how this just rolled from, from GFW into TNA. All right, that's good. Because cool. all I really have to say about TNA is it still kind of sucks. <laughs> no, I'm being completely honest here. You know, I watch with Raw and SmackDown. You know, it's five hours of wrestling. And then I got an hour of Lucha Underground. And then I got two hours of TNA. And maybe it's because TNA is the last show of the week. 
and maybe I'm just suffering from wrestling burnout by that point. Or maybe it's just because Lucha Underground is so friggin' awesome that it just overshadows everything else that mm-hmm. TNA will possibly do. Like, really, TNA's really bored to me the last couple weeks. It's been all um, Kurt Angle and that crazy guy whose name now I can't remember for some reason. Um, yeah, I, I'm totally Eric blanking Young. on his name now. Eric Young. That's all it's been for me. And then, like, last night, I watched about half of TNA, and Kurt Angle, like, had a Marine dude that only had one leg, which was kind of impressive, because the guy, I guess, actually wrestled, I never got to finish the episode. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I mean, TNA is really... I like Mr. Anderson. Oh, Mike Tanay. They got Mike Tanay doing commentary now. I don't know what happened to Al Snow. That must have just been, like, a one-night gig for the snowman. Which is a shame, because, for me, I'm a really big fan of Al Snow, and I felt like that was something that would have brought me back to TNA. But as of right now, TNA still sucks. You know, what am I, what can I say? You know, um, it's, it doesn't, it's, I mean, WWE still kind of sucks too. So I'm just going to, I'm done with TNA now. I'm going to go into the WWE stuff. And, uh, you know, they got payback, which just happened, which we'll review next week. Nah. Maybe, no? You nah. don't even want to talk about payback It'll be a week? week after. By then it's like, why review okay. it? Well, just because you know, we could just talk about it. If anything major or interesting, I mean, most happens. of this stuff we're talking about right now is old. As far as WWE, I mean, by the time people listen to this show, there's a new Raw on. Yeah. Already, we're, we're, we're reviewing the week prior. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know. I guess it just depends how payback goes. Well, and then there's the Elimination Chamber too, which they just announced. Yeah. Which that's so weird. It's going to happen the weekend after. Two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. It's a week apart. Which, like, so actually, if you're listening to this... Then you get one Sunday with nothing, and then you get... If, if you're chamber. listening to this as we record, for us, Payback's tomorrow, but Payback will have already happened once this airs. And Dude, then we'll be staring... You make, you make me think, like, we're Marvel and DC now, we're screwing with continuity. Yeah, Don't totally. Do we are. That. It's we're, we're breaking time. When I was talking about WWE, Daniel Bryan, once again, has re- uh, had to relinquish uh, the belt, the IC title. Yeah, it's... Uh, you know, I felt really bad for Brian because, I mean, I love the guy. He's a great guy. As we said on Breaking the Fourth Wall this week, you know, CM Punk is one of those wrestlers that doesn't deserve the notoriety he gets because of his attitude towards fans. And I feel like Daniel Bryan has, like, I don't feel like he's not gotten a big head over his position at all. Mm-hmm. He doesn't understand why the people love him so much, but he appreciates it nonetheless. Right. And uh, it's it's sad to see that he had to relinquish the IC title. I think it sucks, dude. I mean, he had his moment at WrestleMania 30, mm-hmm. just to, for, to have it taken away due right. to an injury. He's gone for nine months. He comes back. He has a WrestleMania moment. He gets another belt, and now he's got to get yeah, it up all over thing. again. It's got to be like so hard, man, to like be. You know, you're in this profession. You love this profession. You reach the top of the game only to get knocked down twice. You get back in the game and get knocked down again. I mean, un- unfortunately, this could be it for Daniel Bryan. He doesn't even know. Well, according to PWI, uh, PWInsider.com, uh, Daniel Bryan was scheduled to make an appearance at Sunday's uh, Payback yeah. pay-per-view or whatever, but I like, obviously, by the time, like you said, by the time this is heard, Payback will have happened already. But uh, he was also supposed to appear on Raw and SmackDown this week, but he's been pulled off those events so he can focus on his physical therapy. Um, and people are saying that he won't return it to the TV until he's been cleared to wrestle. Or if they need him to promote the stuff he's got coming up, like his book and his DVD and stuff. Right, right. Um, but uh, WWE officials have been talking about uh, what he might do, possibly in a non-wrestling role, if he's forced or if he's decided and uh, that he's unable to return to the ring. Well, you know, I've got to give WWE credit for that. Is they seem to, when bad things happen to good wrestlers, they do try and help them out. Yeah. You know, uh, puke. Draws. Uh, draws. Darren draws off. Uh, I know he wrote for WWE for a long time after his accident. Um, you know, Corey Graves is doing commentary in NXT. And so hopefully, you know, if he does have to retire, they they figure something out for him. Um, Damian Sandow, back to doing characters again. It's like they didn't even give him a chance. I mean, I like that he's doing Macho Man. Believe it or not, though, I haven't had a chance to actually watch Raw and see Dude, him do it. It was funny. I heard... Um, this whole weird uh, feud that he has with Axelmania is kind of weird, though. 
Um, the funny thing about that is, is on Raw this week, maybe it was SmackDown, I might be confused. They had a match. Damian Sandow comes out as Damian uh, <laughs> Macho, Macho Miz Man is what I think he was called. Macho Miz Dow. No, it was Macho Miz Man. Man Dow. Man, are you sure? Yeah, Macho Man Macho Dow. Man Dow, whatever. Uh, JBL kept calling him Man Cow. <laughs> which I was like, oh, great, you know, let's give a, a scrubbed-out Chicago DJ props that he doesn't deserve at all. Yeah, really. And uh, and in the middle of their match, the Ascension came out. Okay. For the first time since the Ascension has been on the main roster, they were given props by the commentary team. Really? Yeah. Booker T said he liked the Ascension. Bradshaw said he liked the Ascension. Which is funny because Bradshaw has been the one that's been tearing down the Ascension ever since they came in. They must have been. They must be doing something with the Ascension then for them to be hyping them up. Like so, that. well, yeah, that's what I thought too. I'm like, man, I'm like, finally, the props for the Ascension. The Ascension come out. They attack Damian Sandow and Curtis Axel, and what happens? Damian Sandow lays the smack down. Nice. So apparently now, yeah. payback pre-show. Macho Miz Man or Macho Mandow and it's not apparently if, if this Axel Mania is. happens. Yeah. Which obviously you'll know the outcome of that before we talk on the show to you. On a time paradox. Continuity error. Sorry. I'm Going back to uh, TNA really quick. Uh, they've um, they issued a following press release that uh, starting June 3rd, Impact is moving back to Wednesdays. Oh, really? Yeah. Man, that's let's just, I don't know. I mean, does it even matter what day of the week they're on if nobody's watching? Um, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I don't think so either. You know, it's it's not the talent that they have that's bad because they've got some good talent there. You know, it's it's just I don't know. Maybe it's like I don't know if it's the production of the show or the writing of the show. You know, it's just it's it's just it's got to be the writing because the performers are good. You know, they're not they're not bad. They're, they're yeah, doing no, a good that's job. that's totally not my problem with TNA. It's not that they're they don't have talent. It's just they don't have know how to use that talent. Yeah, and they seem to be relying on like the throwaways and old men like Kurt Angle, who, in my opinion, I mean, I think Kurt Angle's day is past. Yeah, I mean, he still gets in there and, th- and throws down, so I got to give him props. But I mean, he's old school. You know, it's like, would you want to see Triple H wrestling every week? Nah. No, man, it's time for the new crop. What else you got for WWE? Um, that's really all I got for WWE. All right. Well, for our hometown uh, Chicago fans, uh, the following press release was issued to WrestleZone.com. Freelance Wrestling TV has landed on WCIU-2 Saturdays at 2 a.m. What? Uh... Yeah. So, And the description, uh, according to WrestleZone, says... If you're a rabid Chicago pro wrestling fan, then this past Saturday at 2 a.m. you were treated to the debut episode of Freelance Wrestling TV. For the next 12 weeks, fans will continue to have the chance to get in on the action for free that until now has been limited to the Abbey Pub and DVDs. Freelance Wrestling TV Season 1 features 13 30-minute long episodes and is only available on WCIU 2 Saturdays at 2 a.m. Uh, the decision to only air the episodes on TV and not online was made by freelance wrestling owner Nick Almirandez. Nick explained, It's just a cool thing to be on TV. I like not having it online so that as a freelance fan, you have to stay up late on Saturday night and catch it when it airs. It just seems like something fun for our fans here in Chicago. If you have a DVR and record it, you can watch the episodes whenever you like. Episode 1 of Freelance Wrestling TV featured an uninterrupted 20-minute wrestling clinic between Freelance Wrestling Originals I, um, Isaias Velasquez and Craig Mitchell. These two wrestlers define the hard-hitting, over-the-top style that has come to define freelance wrestling. Each week, expect to become slowly familiarized with the entire freelance wrestling roster. Every episode of Freelance Wrestling TV Season 1 is fully sponsored by Pro Wrestling Tees slash One Hour Tees. They are edited together by noted Chicago filmmaker Jack Ettinger and hosted by Nick Hausman and Mark Maxwell. Freelance Wrestling is also proud to have sponsorship with great brand, great brands like Chi Town Fitted, BB, PBR, and the Rebellion Network. PBR. Freelance Wrestling vs. The World is Freelance Wrestling's next live event. It will be held June 12th at the Abbey Pub and will feature a special early start time of 8 p.m. It will feature a one-night eight-man elimination tournament to crown the first ever Freelance Wrestling Champion. The band that would be shaking the freelance fans' eardrums would be the Randy Savages. 
Tickets are available at www.abbypub.com. Nice. Now, what was the channel that that airs on? WCIU2. U2? No, WCIU, you know, the U. Yeah, U2. But 2 as in dash T-O-O. Like yeah, o. that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah I'm sorry. I yeah. obviously didn't explain that. Sweet. And, and it's, uh, what day is that on? Saturdays at 2 a.m. Saturdays at 2 a.m. Damn, I'm going to have to set my DVR for that. Some new wrestling. I like to see that, especially them being hometown boys. Yeah, anything, no, absolutely. You know, anything hometown, we try to support. You, want, you totally want to support that because that's good stuff. Unfortunately, not all hometown boys support us. Yeah, totally. We want, you know, whatever. So I'm going to take our last uh, minutes of the show here and hit you with some Lucha Underground, which I know Let's do it. you haven't got to watch yet. Like, dude, out of all the wrestling shows I'm watching, every week, Lucha Underground never disappoints. With every match they put on that show, nothing ever disappoints. Nice. Um, two weeks ago, which Wednesday, new Lucha Underground on tonight, um... Two weeks ago, we got uh, Alberto Del Rio. Oh, Alberto I'm sorry. El Patron. Albor- yeah, exactly. El Patron versus Johnny Mundo. I got a bottle of Patron in my fridge from nice. New Year's that I bought, and I just not have yet cracked the damn bottle. I love me some Patron. Patron is good stuff. So, you got them. It was a, a match for the uh, number one contendership. Okay. Which then, obviously, Hernandez, there was a three-way match also against uh, him, the man they call Cage, and King Corno. And he came out on top of that. And then, obviously, there was some complaining that, oh, you know, I'm supposed to be one number one contender. Well, they switched it to where this week, the winner of, oh, I'm sorry, last Wednesday, the winner of the El Patron Mundo match would face Hernandez for, for the, the official number one for the official spot. number one contender okay. spot. So, two weeks ago, Al Patron, Mundo, man, hell of a match. I really thought Mundo was going to pull it out. Mundo? Mundo. Yeah, Mundo. And he didn't. Oh, man. Al Patron took him down. Nice. And then this week. But you already knew that. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. When he used to do that? And then this week, you get uh, Al Patron and Hernandez. Nice. Dude, epic match. Epic match. And it really looked like that they were going to give it to Alberto. And they gave it to Hernandez. And then Johnny Mundo came out and threw Alberto through an office window. Whoa. And effed him up a little more. And threw him back in the ring. And Hernandez was like, what the hell? But obviously took the pinfall anyway. Right, right, right. So in the coming weeks, I'm not sure if it'll be tonight or two weeks from now because they really don't. T- I, don't I don't remember. Mm. Too much stuff for me to remember. At some point, he'll have his match against Prince Puma, which is going to be interesting because they're both boys of, uh, oh man, I forgot his name now, the old school guy. Conan. Conan. They're both Conan's boys. Gotcha. So it's kind of curious to see where Conan's going to fall in that. Is he going to end up screwing Puma over and helping out Hernandez, vice versa, who knows. <clears throat> on a closing note, again, for Chicago, I, sh- I should have said this earlier before you jumped on the Lucha Underground stuff. WWE related, for those that don't know, July 6th, Monday Night Raw returns to the All-State Arena, so go get your tickets. But besides that, WrestleZone posted an interview. We get all our info from WrestleZone, so yay to WrestleZone. Um, Vince McMahon on return- WrestleMania returning to Chicago, CM Punk chance, and his recent Hall of Fame induction. Since Vince McMahon did a rare, I'll, be- I'll buy Vince McMahon did a rare interview with the Chicago Tribune following his induction into the Boys and Girls Clubs of America Alumni Hall of Fame this week. When asked if Chicago would ever host the annual WrestleMania pay-per-view again, due to, to, due to the company's policy of only hosting the event at massive arenas, McMahon was optimistic for a return to one of pro wrestling's greatest cities. He says, I wouldn't say Chicago is out of the running. We can do colder environments. We went to MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. People wear coats to football. Why not they wear jackets and so forth to WrestleMania? They will. Chicago will definitely be in the running for the future. Uh, end quote. In almost certain WrestleMania, it's almost certain WrestleMania will never be held at the Allstate Arena again with a max wrestling capacity of under 18,000 and United Center where the Bulls play isn't much bigger. You'd have to assume that by quote-unquote colder environments, Vince means the historic Soldier Field, home of the Chicago Bears. Dude, imagine watching that on pay-per-view. That would look great, like with the overhead shot of Soldier Field with the uh, Lake Michigan right there oh, yeah. and Lakeshore Drive. That'd be great. 
Um, it's worth pointing out that the dates for WrestleMania in 30 and 31 saw temperature lows in the 30s for the Windy City. The interview, which you can read at the link above, also contains... Pretend I didn't say that. Uh, also contains a brief statement on his time in the Boys and Girls Club as a kid. And also, when asked if the McMahons were sick of the CM Punk chants yet, Vince simply stated and then restated, no. Classy guy that, Vince. Yeah, gotta give it to him. Yep. Gotta give Vince some credit, man. Um... I'm, you know, I'm, I'm dragging this back to the underground, dude. Do it. Um, <clears throat> they did this crazy seven-way match. It was intense. Um, it was uh, It was for this weird Mexican Az- Aztec medallion. That's what it was called. <clears throat> that was, <clears throat> excuse me, promised immortality to the winner. Um, the match consisted of uh, Sexy Star... Pentagon Jr., who's freaking crazy, Kill Shot, the Mac, who for a big dude moves incredibly, like, incredibly well. Dude, that guy's got some moves. Uh, Cage, King Cuerno, and Phoenix. First off, I gotta say, it impresses me that Lucha Underground, that the women wrestle against the men. Like, where you don't see that in any other form, maybe in some Jap- Japan. Right. But American wrestling, that doesn't happen. I think it's kind of awesome because why not? And you know what? For for a character named Sexy Star, she dresses really classy. She like wears spanks, like shorts, yeah, like that cover more than her her butt. Looking at you, Nikki Bella. I'm looking at you, Nikki Bella. No. I bet you are. <laughs> but uh, that was an excellent match, man. Action all over the place. Um, Phoenix ended up coming up with the win. Still don't know what that coin's gonna mean. And then next week, which should be tonight, um, we have a rematch between, uh, I can't remember their name, Those the Mexican gang, I can't remember them. I, remember I showed you the three-way match? Yeah. With uh, Son of Havoc and mm-hmm. Angelico and your girl. I remember the group though, but yeah, I remember. Uh, what's her name? Ivelisse. Ivelisse the Man, Huntress. She's, she's bad, dude. I told she's you. She's got a broken leg, she's going to get in the ring and throw down. That's going to be a good match, man. Those trios... You. I mean, I've been impressed with every match I've seen with Lucha Underground, so I'm looking forward to seeing that one. Um, got, got anything else for us, brother? No, man. Um, we mentioned it on Breaking the Fourth Wall. I mentioned it here. We started a petition uh, for JDF versus CM Punk. The fans want to watch it. Let's make it happen. Simply sign the petition uh, and share it. It takes 20 to 30 seconds out of your day. Um, you know, hopefully it happens. Uh, besides that, it'll help us out. It'll get us uh, get our name out there a little bit more, hopefully, especially if it does happen. And if it doesn't happen, but they still catch wind of it, hey, it's still more exposure yeah, totally. for our name, you know. But regardless, the point is, please just, you know, you're listening to the show. You're obviously a fan of ours. Do us the favor. Uh, it's on our all over our social media, on Twitter and Facebook and on our personal Facebook pages. Um, just go ahead, click the link, sign the petition, and hit Seriously, share. Seriously, less than 20 seconds. Yeah. Less than 20 seconds. That's all we ask. <clears throat> it's real simple, real easy. Show some support. You know everyone wants to see it. Dana White, make the UFC a little money. Yeah. Which it, I, I would, It would be awesome that if this match went down, that if like JDF gave us a shout out live on a UFC event. Oh, man. Because you know Punk ain't going to do that stuff. Because no. Punk is just that. A Punk. And, yeah. uh, you know, we'll be back here next week. Probably talk a little payback little uh elimination chamber maybe oh no because that will happen yeah that's recording. not that's not it's man that's really lot. weird that they brought back that elimination chamber that's just strange it is but as always your host bb brian adams junior ruiz this is the lockup this was the lockup We're this, done now. this was the lockup everything we do commercemix.com facebook that Twitter. site is getting updated i swear i'm working on it <clears throat> yeah, yeah being a working man it takes time but it is getting worked on. <laughs> oh, you just cut me the dirtiest look. I wish people could have saw it. Because you gave me that look like, yeah, that dude, was whatever. Awesome. That was awesome. But it is coming. I you know. kid, I kid. I joke, I joke, I kid, I kid. Brian but, at comicsremix.com. Junior, comicsremix.com. Alex at comicsremix.com. Yep. Alex is the guy who does our toy reviews. In our case toy you reviews, know. check him out. Reviews remixed. He did some, I don't know what he did last week. Wasn't it a Hulk? 
Yeah, the Hulk icons figure, I believe. Hulk icons figure. I have to watch that. Yeah. But uh, everything we do, comics remixed, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the Spinner Rack at Twitter. See y'all next week. For oh, more. hold on, dude. Oh. Hold on, hold on. On a really quick. Oh, some breaking news. I'm, I'm reading. Do, 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 I'm going through do, do, Facebook, do, do, right? Do, 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 do. Um, I'm, I'm just kind of scrolling here because I'm trying to like, like I said I've been pop, uh, the petition I'm constantly posting it um, so as I'm scrolling through my Facebook feed um, bleacherreport.com reports and it's a YouTube video that was posted by Nikki Bella I'm not even going to watch the video until after we finish recording but I'm just going to tell you Nikki Bella lip syncs Frozen's Let It Go while John Cena sits on the toilet what? <laughs> Okay, say that one more time. Nikki Bella lip syncs Frozen's Let It Go while John Cena sits on the toilet. Wow. You know, now I gotta push play. Let it go. Look at this. Let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. Let it go. Wow. That, you know, I was gonna say that that... This is hilarious. That, it is funny. This is hilarious. No you guys, pun intended. You guys have to look this up. Uh, Nikki Bella. It's it, the YouTube video is called Nikki Bella sings Frozen to John Cena. Look it up. It's only a few seconds long, but it's pretty damn funny. Wow. Um, I think it'd be funnier <laughs> if John Cena didn't react the way he just did in the video. Like if he would have just kept the calm face, that would have been cooler. Yeah. But he kind of over exaggerated, but it was still pretty funny. So. That's all I got, man. That's the lockup, baby. We'll see you guys next week. Deuces. Peace.